James Marcus. And I'm Hannah Paddock. And we are undergraduate students here at UNCW, and we did a research project for Randolph and Carla. They are with Men and Women United for Youth and Families, and they've noticed within Bladen County an increase in crime amongst the youth. And we dove into that issue and decided to do a research project. For our research project, we did both interviews and surveys. And for the surveys, we did the Delphi technique, which uses a more structured survey method that uses multiple multiple choice questions and then also open open answered questions that way you get a more broad specific I guess answer for what you're trying to ask and then also we just interviewed people within the area key informants just to get a more knowledgeable answer about the area um, so we did Bladen County and for those of you not familiar with Bladen County just a little background um, it's a rural community with 37 residents per square mile um, and the median income per household is about $30,000 annually. Um, and as far as crime goes, the scale for the national census is 1, which is no crime, to 100, which is high crime. The national average is about 41, um, but Bladen County did at 54. So it's a little bit higher than the regular average, um, which is why we picked this as our topic. Um, for our research questions, what factors in Bladen County can be attributed to youth getting involved in crime or criminal behavior? and how can third places or lack thereof contribute to the delinquent behavior. Um, so just a background of what third places are. Third place is a social surrounding separate from the two usual social environments, that being home and workplace. And examples of this would be cafes, clubs, parks, um, kind of recreational facilities. Um, but in rural areas like Bladen County, many non-traditional and less structured third places exist. Um, this could be like a neighborhood where kids just congregate to interact and play with each other. Um, so our hypothesis for the first question is the minimal number of third places in Blaney County prohibits youth and other residents from congregating as a community and thus motivating criminal behavior. Um, our second question was what types of jobs are available within Blaney County and what specific demographic, if any, are filling these jobs. Uh, for this, we said employment opportunities in Blaney County are within food processing, manufacturing, and assembly, textiles, chemicals, and agribusiness with qualified adults filling such positions. From this, our surveys, we did 37 of them that we conducted within Bladen County, and we found that there was a significant wage gap within the county. 43% of the residents that we surveyed make less than 40% or $40,000 per year annually, and then 21% made over $80,000. There's a large portion of between the forty dollars and $80,000 range that is unaccounted for and that there's more than almost about 50% of the population living under poverty and the rest living well above. We also noticed that within the county and then when we asked the residents what they like to do in local hangouts for third places, we noticed that there was a, I guess, disconnect between the older crowd, the people that we surveyed, and the youth. A lot of them believe that the youth would like to hang out in like the churches and areas that they're most recognized with. But when we interviewed more of the youth, a lot of them said that they had no areas that they like to hang out with or they like to hang out in the Walmart parking lots or the street corners and stuff like that. Also, when we were doing the analysis of resources offered within the area, we noticed that there was not many grocery stores offered within the area. When we when surveyed, 58.3% reported that the most popular place they like to shop at is Food Lion, while second behind that, 25% like to shop at Piggly Wiggly. And then within the county, the only other options for food is a Walmart, which is actually located right across the street from Food Lion, and then other Lowe's Foods and Whole Foods, which are located 20 to 30 miles without the so that being said, there's not much resources um, just for individuals, but also for job opportunities. Um, there are very few places that actually employ local residents, and those positions are being filled by older um, community members, leaving little to no jobs for the youth or kids around the age of 18. Um, so for this, we just recommended a few things in order to kind of um, boost the area. So first, to provide youth with a relevant and realistic youth uh, recreation center. There really isn't much, and for the things that there are, there's little to no transportation to them. Um, and most of the recreational facilities are run through the school um, or churches. And so if you're not involved with either or you have graduated and you're over the age of 18, there really is um, no place or recreational area for them to hang out. Um, 
Also, focus on creating off-season, fall and winter activities for the youth. Um, behind saying that there are none, uh, we heard Whiteville Lake. Uh, that being said, though, for spring and summer, it's pretty much the only time you can do that, and there's now a fee to hang out there. So, finding something for these kids to do, basically, during the winter when you can't go to the lake. Um, we also want to help bring business to Bladen County in order to help create jobs for the youth and providing more opportunities for them. Um, another thing we can do is create youth programs that partner with churches. Um, that way they can be carried out without funding. Right now there are a ton of programs run through the church, but we can always improve that and increase that number. Um, also, to raise funds for establishment of new recreational facilities within Bladen County, such as a movie theater, bowling alley, recreational courts, and fields, um, Currently, the only ones, like even in Elizabethtown, there are none, and so people are having to drive even farther to Lumberton. Um, so if we can bring that there, that would be incredible. Um, moving create reliable transportation within the county for everyday use for recreation and necessities such as grocery shopping, work, but also after school programming. Um, currently, the only transportation really is run through the educational system, um, and so we need to do that and get more transportation, such as like vans, even through men and women, um, or just public transportation. Um, and then also going back to Whiteville Lake, make Whiteville Lake more easily accessible by eliminating or reducing the entrance cost. So even though it is a small fee, things like this in a rural area where people don't have enough money kind of already just limits what they're able to do. Um, also, there's a program called Dreams in Wilmington that we really want them to link up with. The only issue is transportation. Um, we Dreams has offered them help and they have been wanting to do it, but Men and Women Freezing Family only has two vans. And so to increase their funding or get them vans or somehow increase transportation between Blaine County and not just Men and Women Freezing Families, but all the towns within it that are farther away, like say an hour and a half, like Lizard Town, to Wilmington, they'd have the opportunity to really participate in a lot more like after school activities um, and great opportunities for youth. And as a recommendation to figure out what the youth really want to get involved in, want to have as a resource within their community, as I was stated earlier, there seemed to be a disconnect when I was giving the surveys out. A lot of the older population was there and answering the questions, and so they weren't particularly in tune with what the youth like to do. And so I recommend going to the local schools, high schools, middle schools, and giving out surveys and asking them what they would be interested in coming to the community and maybe getting them involved in the process to make it more interesting for them too. Yeah. There is a, like a BMX dirt bike track in Elizabethtown. Uh, that being said, we don't know if it's actually used. It could be one of those things that was built and funded, um, but it's high maintenance costs, and we don't know if the kids actually use it. You want to make sure that we are like in tune with what they want and what they'll actually use rather than just funding something and not knowing and building it and then having no um, so to make sure we get out and talk to the youth and really see what they want and what they would use.